Aloha my kako. Welcome to Women Unleashed online retreat. I'm very happy to welcome you to your very first session where we're going to help you create your Woman Unleashed journal. My name is Amber Quile Mailani Benici and I'm looking forward to spending the next 20 minutes with you to get you going. So a couple things. When we go ahead and start the retreat, there are a couple of things we're going to do. First of all, as I'm always going to let you know what materials you need for the session, as well as we're going to get grounded before I introduce your session speaker. So let's go ahead and let's run through what you need today. So any journal will work. You could have something like this. You could have a composition book. You could have a journal. Um, best for this is going to be with unlined. So see what you've got lying around that's unlined that you can play with. Uh, today we are also going to be using if you have markers, uh, watercolors, um, glue, scissors, things, just crafts, things that you're going to have lying around. Just grab what you got and bring them. And um, I'm going to go into more detail about the specific materials you need and show you exactly what they are a little bit later so you can pick up some things if you'd like. But um, whatever you got, we can work with it. So. Don't let that stop you. Um, and always, we also like to start with whatever you're drinking today. Today, I'm drinking Yoda. Yoda, this is my husband's cup. Isn't it cute? May the force be with you. Yes. I'm drinking some tea. So make sure that you uh, make yourself comfortable. If you want your water glass with lemon, if you'd like to have a glass of wine, up to you, my darlings. And let's get here and get grounded and settled. So we're going to close our eyes together and we're going to take our first breath. Now this first breath is going to represent the past and anything that before this point has been distracting you or on your mind or that you've been thinking about. We're going to inhale in and I want you as you exhale to imagine that just dripping right off you. Exhale out. Our second breath is about the future where our mind might be wandering or thinking or worrying about things to come. Let's go ahead, inhale in and release that. And our third breath is to inhale and smell this moment, this space and time. Exhale. And when you're ready, opening your eyes. And let's begin. The first thing I'm going to want us to do before we even get started on our journal is for you to set your intention. So I want you to think about what made you sign up for this? What, what stirring, what calling was there that made you say, yeah, I want to come to this? Do you need to nourish and replenish yourself? Do you want to have some fun? Do you want to try something you haven't done before? Do you want to take some time just to slow down and get into your rhythm? Do you want to connect into your feminine power and move into the next year from that space? What drew you in? What was that magnet for you? Behind me, I have this um, painting that I did and she's sleeping, she's resting underneath a tree and it says, surrender to love, trusting fruit will come. Waiting under mysteries branches, transformations rest. And that's what we're gonna be doing is resting some, transforming and resting in the mystery. So if you are, unsure about your intention we're going to go ahead and move do that when we get into our opening um, session in the retreat but for now just kind of let this time between now when you're creating your journal to when we begin let this be a time when you just percolate notice your dreams notice what starts to come up so that we can use those things through our retreat time together okay Let's get going with your making of your journal. Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple samples of journals that I've done. Things 
I've showed you already that you can use composition book, your regular old journal. This is one that I have. It's actually an art journal, but it's um, it's not very thick pages, kind of thin pages, black, and I, oh, I didn't do anything on that one. Here's um, a journal where I actually um, took some construction paper and I wrapped it around, glued it around the edges so I could paint it and collage it. And this one is some watercolor paper that I glued around the edge. Or actually this is canvas, and I think about it. this is canvas paper that I glued around the edge. So you can use watercolor paper, canvas paper, um, use some strong glue if we're going to use those mediums. You can always just collage. Um, I do that with a lot of my journals. Take out some magazines, chop them up, see what images feel good for you, and then glue them on your journal. Um, one thing that I do like to do too is I might start and I might do the cover if I kind of know where I'm beginning. And then let, you know, while we're doing this experience, see how you want to cover the back part of your journal. So, so many different options on things to do. So I'm going to let you cover your journal any way that you want. Collage, painting, drawing, um, leaving it just plain. You get to choose what you want to do for your cover. So have fun with that. Okay, if your journal is doesn't have something where you can actually um, paint on or glue on, you can always just wrap it with like a paper bag or with any sort of collage thing and glue stuff on there. So that's the first thing. The next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk about reinforcing your binding. Now, some journals are made very, very well where they're actually stitched in and sewn in, and other ones, not so much. So, for example, this one is one of the composition books, and you'll notice that I have some. I used ribbon, and I've used thread and yarn, so go through and see if you have any old wrapping things you can use. This one I used a bunch of red yarn. I just, what I did was I went through the journal and like every, I don't know, 5, 10, 10, 20 pages, I just go ahead and I tied that in. And that reinforced my journal. There's another one. So let yourself have fun going through and reinforcing the binding if you need to do that. Um, so it is beautiful. It's a way just to um, keep your pages from falling out when they start to get all thick and, and fat and juicy. <laughs> all right. Um, now we're going to talk about the actual inside of the journal and ways to prep your pages to make them so it's easy for you to use. You know, some things we do, you're not going to need to prep the pages at all. You can just go for it and have fun. Now, other things we do, like if you're gonna do some paint or use some water, you're gonna need to kind of reinforce those pages, and there are several ways to do that. One, the easiest way, is just to glue two, pieces, two pages together. Glue stick, booyah, you're done, your stuff is glued together. That's the easiest way. You can also um, make thicker pages by collage. You can like take some old papers and glue them on top. You can um, also use this right here. It's called gesso. This is Liquitex um, gesso. And what it is, it's kind of like a thick pasty material that you paint on your page. And it makes it kind of toothy, which means that it's not sheer and shiny, it's kind of got some texture to it so that your paint has something to stick onto and to glob onto. This does take a little bit to dry, so you're gonna need a hair dryer or something like that if you wanna use that. Um, there's also, I've done, they have guests that you can spray on that I got at a craft store, I've been experimenting with that. Doesn't work as well as the paint on gesso, but you know, it is what it is. So those are some ways just to thicken your pages. Now. Sometimes before I start, I like to prep my pages by actually just putting some color on the page. You can do that by using crayons, you can use watercolors, all sorts of different things. 
let me run through some of the materials that you're that when I say hey grab your journal and your art goodies this is what I mean when we do our different sessions okay first of all pen yeah standard your pen you can use also sharpies there's different kinds of sharpies I have black ones I've got gold I've got silver I've got um, there's some calligraphy pens that I'm still figuring out how to actually do calligraphy but I have some calligraphy pens to work with that and markers this is a pen that I have that's more of a um, it's a Japanese style pen it's a paint pen or if you see this here it's like a about my forehead it's like a paintbrush pen that's from Japan but you can just find you know whatever stuff you have lying around different pens and things to use in that way so those are your writing materials also you're gonna want to have glue stick and scissors which will be if you want to do any sort of collaging um, of your materials next is going to be paint or putting color on this is optional but something you can do that's very simple even if you're saying I'm not creative this is like your standard Crayola watercolor thing that I got I have for my kids and um, this is one easy way to go um, if you want to spend just not even that much more money maybe ten more dollars you can get actually a nicer set this is Winston and Newton oops oh it's so bright can't even see it but you can open it up and see here's the different watercolors and this is a tray and it comes with a pen or a watercolor brush you can use so this is just a fun way to kind of play there's all sorts of different watercolor um, things you can use also you can use your regular standardized paint with acrylic paints these are some cheaper ones I have some Reeves you just squirt it out add some water put it on your page you're good to go okay so that's for color we talked about your markers and then just because you want glitter I've got gold and silver here. There's like a million different colors, but if you want to do some glitter, that's really fun. Really simple. You just take your glue stick and like pour a little bit on. Girl loves glitter. So you can use anything you want in your journal. If you have old cards that you have or things that you've saved because you're like, oh, this is so cute. I don't want to get rid of it. You can make that and put it into your, into your journal. I'm going to show you a couple options of things that I do for taking notes because that's part of what we're doing is we're creating a journal for you to take notes and have put your experiences in here and I want to say just briefly I'm going to go into it more um, at a different session but the main reason we're having you create this journal is because just by hand writing notes you're only using half of your brain you don't remember as much information and um, you're not able to focus as clearly as you are if you add color if you are doodling if you're doing creative things so for example this is um, this is how I take notes this is actually I went to a um, my business mastermind and here are the notes and here's what I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do stuff like this okay today you might be thinking oh my gosh I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be so much fun. But what I want to show you is that when I come back and look at these notes, I'm immediately able to take in what I got there. It was like, oh, yeah, that's what this is about. Instead of having to go back and read and read and read notes. Part of this retreat is for you to tap into your feminine powers. And part of your feminine power is your creativity. We are all women. You know, Whether we've had children or not, we have this creative urge inside of us. And so we're going to use that during this time together for this to make more of a difference for you. So let's go ahead and look at, um, first of all, creating color on your background, some easy things to do. So I'm just going to take, um, I'll take, go ahead and take my watercolor. I'm going to spray, just spray my watercolors and grab a brush. Oop. What do I have here? This thick old brush. And I'm just going to show you. 
No, nope, I'm going to have to choose a darker color for you to see it. Voila. I just used some water and some of the watercolor and let that smear. So that's one easy thing you can do. You can also do that with crayons. Just let your crayon go all over your page and have fun creating the background. I'm going to show you now a couple different writing styles. These are simple things you can do to make your work look amazing. Okay. I'm going to use my Sharpie here. And here we go. And I'm now you all know how different to write different ways, right? We can do block like hello. You can dress it up. This is a technique that Shiloh Sophia actually taught me, which is um, my art mommy, which is you. Um, make the first or last letter extend it out hello you can also make dots i'm putting dots on my blocks here you can write your normal writing so just by varying the font the font <laughs> the style of writing you're using as well as the size you're gonna go ahead and get some interesting things going on with your note taking so don't just take notes like sometimes use big words if something really stood out to you if someone says something it was like wow that's so good make that bold make that big so that you're able to go back and see it later another easy thing we like to do is to create designs or symbols and this can be as easy as just doing the outer edges of your thing. You can do a dot, line, dot, line. You can do swirls. Remembering that as you're doing these things, even as someone's talking, that this is helping you take in more information. So many different options here. So as someone's talking, let yourself doodle. Let yourself create shapes. Have fun. One thing that I like to do is sometimes create boxes when I'm taking notes. Like if something stands out to me, I'm like, oh, I really want that to be in there. For example, I made this box here, and this is where I put notes in here. Box with circle, line, circle, line. Pretty simple stuff, yeah? There's another box I made. See? Lines and dots. The next thing I want to say is if someone's speaking and if you're um, at the retreat and they say something that stands out to you look for things or listen for things that have symbols to you so that you can um, draw them down you can draw the symbols now don't get caught up on like I'm not a drawer that kind of thing I want you to have fun to try something different for example on this one here I was drawing I drew a car now the car doesn't really look great, right? It's kind of like a wonky looking car. And even this right here, cracks. But the reason I drew this car is because um, she was talking about how entitlement and about how it's like if you either go buy your kid a car or if they earn their money for a car. And so I was like, oh, so I drew this car. Or I have a crack below here. And she talked about hiring people when things start to drop through the cracks, okay? So I drew cracks. So listen for symbols, listen for things that stand out to you and to take notes that way. And then 
one other piece I want to talk about is if you're feeling like, oh, I can't draw, that kind of thing, I want you just to try, okay? And I'm going to show you a couple simple things. Um, first, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you when we do our session together, how to actually draw people, um, faces, where you can do that. But for now, I'm going to show you just generic. Here we go, head, body, hair. So don't worry about drawing and getting things to look exactly right. See if instead that you can connect to the, um, just the essence of it. If there's something that will remind you, remind you of it. Like even like, for example, like an owl. I'm really into drawing owls lately, but I don't really draw owls the way that owls necessarily look. But I do have some things that I know that make me, make it look like an owl. Like I do like this kind of thing. Oh, here's a shape of an owl. She's got an owl nose and eyes. Does that look like a real owl? Not necessarily, but to me, I know it means an owl. Okay? So this journal can be yours. No one has to look inside it at all unless you want to share it. And um, so what do you have to lose? Why not try it? Even though it's silly, it's so much fun. Promise. And then the last piece I want to talk about is something um, from Shiloh Sophia also, which she uses in her painting painting techniques, which she calls glow. And what this is, is where you actually paint around the edges. You don't paint all the way to the sides. And I'm going to show you a couple pages where you can see that. Here we go. This is a great example of glow. I did this for a retreat I was doing, and I, at the end, I wanted people to feel this way, right? So I wrote my notes, and then I did the colors around the words, but I didn't go all the way to the edges. See how I left some, some space around it, so it kind of like the words glow? I did that up here, too. It creates this really cool effect so you can fill in the edges and then leave glow so i hope that you've enjoyed um that you're getting started i can't wait for you to see what you've got going on click on the facebook link below where you go ahead and join our group and i would love for you to if you feel called to share one your intention so far like what made you sign up for the retreat? What was that yearning or that calling for you? And two, if you'd like, share in the group an image of your journal. You can share, you know, the cover, what you got going. Um, if you're feeling nervous about that, share where you're at. You know, we're all in this together. So sending you much aloha and deep gosh